Hello everyone, I am Narc Survivor. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Before I begin, please hit the thumbs up button down below to show your support. Hit subscribe and click all notifications to be notified when I upload a new video. And if you would like to book a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me, you can go to my website. It is narcsurvivor.co.uk. How is it that narcissists have friends? You look at the narcissist's life and it seems like they have all of these friends. All of these people who they talk to and spend time with. And you may wonder how that is even possible after everything they did to you. But the truth is that narcissists actually don't have any real friends. All they have is enablers. People who encourage and enable their negative and self-destructive behavior. People who don't really care for them or love them. Because if you're a genuine friend, you're not going to tolerate it you're going to confront them and you're going to explain to them that their behavior is not acceptable because that's what love is. It's about supporting each other instead of letting people harm themselves. But narcissists cannot tolerate real friendships because they don't like being confronted or being told what to do or what not to do, which means that it is impossible for a narcissist to have any real friends. Because if they accepted true friendships into their lives, they wouldn't be able to do what they do. So they wouldn't be a narcissist anymore. But they will never accept any criticism because they don't want to improve and they hate their own reflection. While we may be more willing to accept respons responsibility and criticism because we have genuine love for ourselves, which means that when someone brings the truth about ourselves to us, we will want to hear them out. Because while we may have love for ourselves, we also understand that we're not perfect. So we're always looking to improve. But narcissists don't have any friendships or relationships with anyone. It may look like they do, but they are all transactional. They're based on value derived from transactions rather than on morals, ethics or principles. A transactional relationship is a business-like approach to a relationship where they're given clear responsibilities and rewards. The responsibilities define what they're expected to contribute to the narcissist as well as the potential rewards they're expected to receive as a result of their efforts. Transactional relationships are less rewarding than a non-transactional or relational relationship because non-transactional or relation, re relational relationships are built on friendship, compassion, love and trust while transactional love does not exist, as love does not stem from strict agreements. When every relationship a narcissist has is based on agreement, rather than the freedom to choose, because they don't have any real friends. All they have is enablers, many of which are narcissists themselves or minions who perform a specific task or role. So essentially, they are hostages. They're people who are seized and held as security for the fulfillment of a condition. 
whether it's a narcissistic parent or a partner, it's just all about their image. And they expect you to play out a role to support it, which puts a lot of pressure on you to keep performing. So there is no love in these relationships and there is no reciprocation. You're just there to attend to them and admire them and to enable their grandiosity or victimhood because they view you as an extension of themselves and as an object that exists to meet their needs. They don't see you as a separate individual. They don't even know who you are. You're just an appliance to the narcissist, a tool that they use to perform a task or function. So you're just there to cook, clean, give them money or take care of the children. They don't know who you are as a person. It's all about your performance and what they're getting out of it. It's not about a true friendship or a connection, which is how they often seem to have so many friends because they prefer quantity over quality. They focus on the volume of people rather than their subjective value. So they don't pick friends based on their own feelings, tastes or opinions. And instead, they will accept anyone who agrees to perform their desired task or function because they're always looking for more members to join their cult. They see it as though the more people they have in their group, the more supply they can collect from them. And also, they may use it to isolate you by making everyone believe that they are kind and helpful so that even if you tell people what the narcissist has done to you, no one will ever believe you. They will say the same thing as the narcissist because they all share the same thought process. So how could the narcissist have any real friends? if they don't care about how deep the relationship is, to where the truth isn't even spoken about, and nothing is ever resolved. By default, any friendship they have is only going to be surface level. They're all just nameless, faceless servants. Their only importance is from the person who orders them around which is why all they do is copy each other because they're extremely insecure. And it's exactly what the narcissist wants so that they can continue exploiting these people by preying on their weaknesses and by gaslighting them into thinking that they're with someone who is better than them. But if those people ever find this out, it will look bad on the narcissist as they will struggle to maintain the same amount of control that they had in the beginning. Narcissists don't have any real friends. They treat people the same way they treated you. They expect their friends to put in all the effort and to do whatever they want them to do. They manipulate and gaslight their friends just as they did to you. Whether their friend is narcissistic or not, they're under the same spell that you were once susceptible to. The only difference between you and their non-narcissistic friends is that you no longer believe it. The narcissist isn't loyal to any of them. They're not reciprocating anything back to their friends, which is why they often look so confused and they're seeking an explanation. They're seeking support. And some of them may eventually realize that they're dealing with a narcissist. And then they will leave because narcissists use and exploit everyone they're dealing with. 
including their own friends or family members. You've only got to look at how they're being treated to see that they're victims as well. Even the ones who are narcissists themselves. Just look at the amount of time that they have remained loyal and subservient to the narcissist. And yet, what have they ever received in return other than lies, manipulation and gaslighting? So how could they ever maintain these friendships? How is it ever going to last? Because for any friendship to last, there needs to be a mutual benefit. You have to offer something in return. But all narcissists do is take advantage of people. They're just bringing people down. So of course at some point they're going to wake up and realize they're not getting anything, anything out of it. And then they're going to leave. Which means that the narcissist needs to find new targets. So they just repeat the same cycle again and again with different people and without any remorse or with any consideration for how it may affect those people. While real friendships require certain qualities to be present, such as being non-judgmental, empathetic, accepting, supportive, loyal, honest and trustworthy, where you see the other person as your equal and their abilities, qualities and mindset while also appreciating the dissimilarities and differences, which is something a narcissist cannot do. Because in any situation, they have to win. They have to have the advantage. They have to come out on top. It's always a competition. It's always a fight or struggle to achieve or resist something. There's never a time where they can stop thinking about the future, the past, and focus on now. They can never be fully present and aware of the emotions and thoughts that they have. Instead, they just use mindfulness as a strategy to foster acceptance of their grandiose false self and to feel superior to other people. So they can never enjoy the moment without having to outdo them. It's always some type of chaos, trauma and drama that they create for their friends who they keep together with them. And if it looks like some of them have been friends for quite some time, it's like that old quote of how misery loves company. And it's why you will often find many narcissists together in a group because they form trauma bonds with each other over abusing each other or from targeting someone outside their group, where they engage in mental activities or conversation without actual physical or material benefit or value, usually as an excuse to avoid taking constructive action in their lives, because all it really does is support their false self, but it also helps to keep the group in unity while working towards this goal while most of the members of the group feel dissatisfied and it really only satisfies the emotional needs of the narcissist because that's where their collective energy is directed towards. So they're endlessly just blowing up the narcissist's ego and making them feel larger than life. Meanwhile, the narcissist is judging their friends and criticizing them over every little thing. So this approach really just gives the narcissist control over their friends' minds and spirits, which is just a waste of all of their time, because eventually they're all going to find out the truth. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Share your thoughts in the comment section. Hit the subscribe button to receive the notifications. If you would like to support the channel, you can donate at paypal.me slash narcsurvivor. You can book a one-on-one -on -one with me on my website. It's narcsurvivor.co.uk. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.